today is one of the medical city South Luzon's gastroenterologists who has been in practice for eight years now. So let us all welcome Dr. Angelo Lazada. So welcome to Health Art, Dr. Jello. Thank you, Dr. Claude, for uh, inviting me to Health Art. As you all know, we're celebrating Colin Cancer Awareness. First though, um, just for everybody to know, um, what is colon cancer? All right, so uh, colon cancer is actually a disease of the large intestine. No? So the, when you have abnormal growth of cells in the colon, then you can form a uh, polyp. And then uh, as it time passes by, it can grow into a mass. No? So uh, that's what we call colon cancer. Mm -hmm. So you essentially have a tumor mm -hmm. in your large intestine. Yes. Colon cancer, like what we know, right? there's like the benign cancer or there's the, the malignant. Is colon cancer benign or malignant? Or do we classify it as such? Okay, so basically, ano yan, no? when we say colon cancer, no? uh, when we actually say colon cancer, no? cancer itself is already malignant. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yun nga, we can find uh, polyps. Uh, or tumors, no, that are actually smaller, no. They, everything oh. starts as small, right, right. so you can actually find small polyps in the colon. They're not necessarily big masses already, mm -hmm. but they may have uh, what we call you malignant potential. Okay. So that's why when we see these polyps through examinations, no, that we'll probably talk about later, yeah. we can determine if these polyps may turn into cancer one day. Okay. Okay. So. How does a person dog get colon cancer? Or are there any risk factors that can actually cause to polyp formation and eventually colon cancer? So you can probably classify it into two. Mm -hmm. no? uh, you have what we call your inherited or uh, genetic factors, such as, for example, uh, inflammatory bowel disease. So if one person has inflammatory bowel disease, if you have, for example, uh, hereditary syndromes like Lynch syndrome, or the familial adenomatous polyposis syndrome, you can be predisposed to developing colon cancer. Other factors, uh, lifestyle factors, yes. may cause uh, acceleration of development of colon cancer. For mm -hmm. example, uh, obesity, sedentary uh, activity, no, no, no exercise, uh, poor diet, no, such as low fiber, mm -hmm. uh, high fat, mm -hmm. processed meats, you know. Uh, those Fire. things can actually uh, increase one's risk mm -hmm. for developing colon cancer. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, very important, before I forget to mention, is the family history. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if you have a family history of colon cancer, uh, first degree relative, uh, for example, your, your parents or siblings who would have colon cancer, then you're also at an increased risk for developing uh, colon, colon cancer. cancer. Is age also a factor or um, how about like alcohol and smoking? Are they also considered risk factors for ah, Yes, cancer? Dr. Claude, no? So those are also very important risk factors. Mm -hmm. So age, usually uh, 50 and above. Recently, the guidelines have been revised mm -hmm. to an age of 45. So those who are 45 and above should start screening for colon cancer. Uh, smoking as well as alcohol consumption are also very important risk factors that can lead to an increased risk for developing uh, uh, colorectal carcinoma. What are the common symptoms or the red flags of um, colon cancer? Yeah, so as we mentioned, uh, you have the uh, hereditary as well as the lifestyle factors that can develop the, uh, colon cancer. But then, yes, it is important to look for these red flags. So, uh, these are some of the things that are important uh, to take note because uh, usually uh, colon polyps don't have symptoms. So, if you have polyps, you usually don't have symptoms. Uh, but if you have these particular symptoms, like for example, blood in your stool, uh, new onset anemia, uh, you have changes in your bowel habits, uh, unexplained weight loss. So those are some of the things uh, that should trigger you in terms of getting yourself screened and checked. So, um, blood in the stool, and then uh, anemia, unexplained weight loss. Okay. And then plus if you have the 
the changes in bowel habits. Yes, changes in bowel habits. Does it uh, meaning the um, if, for example, you have before regular bowel movement and then suddenly you get constipated, you know, and then like, or for example, does it also factor? Is it a factor also if, for example, before once a day ka lang, and then like, like, you know you poop once a day, and then but more than once a day, is that also something to cause alarm? Well. Uh, not, not really, exactly. not really. Uh, usually, naman pagka merong bowel habits that are are normal for a person, like yeah. you would have a bowel movement every other day. Uh, uh, that is still okay. considered normal. Regular, reg regular, yeah, I mean, regular bowel. bowel movement, but it's just not every day. Mm. Um, uh, the changes in bowel habits would be probably if you have sudden. Uh, diarrhea or alternating mm. constipation with diarrhea. Right. You know, if you have like uh, persistent diarrhea or persistent uh, constipation. So, but those are probably some of the things that would trigger a person, or you would need to consult your gastroenterologist for mm. because, okay. or it, it might actually lead to something else. Mm. Okay, since um, we know that, that we have red flags to watch out for, and then what are the screening options that are available, uh, especially here in our uh, hospital? And how can we get screened for colon cancer? Colon cancer. Okay, it's important that uh, anybody actually who is 45 and above should be screened uh, for colon cancer. No? Even if you don't have symptoms, even if you're feeling okay, uh, you don't have the red flags, as long as you're 45 and above, it's time to get yourself screened against colon cancer. Uh, the screening methods that we have that are available here in the medical city are number one, you can do your non-invasive tests or your invasive tests. Okay. So your non-invasive tests composed of your stool test. Uh, we have two types of stool tests. Uh, one is the FOBT or the fetal alcohol blood test. And the other one is the FIT test or the fetal immunohistochemical test. Mm -hmm. So those are basic stool exams that you just submit to the lab and then it checks for human blood in the stool. And uh, an invasive test that we can also do here at the medical city is the colonoscopy. Mm -hmm. So that is something that uh, uh, is offered yeah. for our patients. Okay. How do we do colonoscopy? How, yes, yes. Uh, that's a good question, Dr. Claude. No? Because, uh, a lot of patients actually do not know this procedure. No? Um, mm -hmm. In fact, they, a lot do not even know that they should be undergoing such a procedure. No? It's not a surgery, it's an outpatient procedure. It's generally an outpatient procedure. It usually takes around 30 minutes to an hour. Uh, it's done under sedation. Uh, there is an instrument. No? It's like a, a long tube, a long flexible tube with a um, camera and a light source at the middle which is connected to a monitor or a screen. So the gastroenterologist would insert this uh, particular instrument in through the rectum to look inside the colon. Uh, and, and see and evaluate you know, and to, to look for uh, possible pathologies like uh, polyps and such. You know. During the colonoscopy, we can actually uh, remove or biopsy these things that we see inside. Um, is it painful? Is well, it... it's not a painful procedure. In fact, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's quite a very easy procedure you know, because it's normally done under sedation. So mm -hmm. we usually have a certified anesthesiologist who will give the sedation. And it's only done through the IV. Okay. So we're only given, uh, we usually just give medications in the IV for, for sedation. Um, so that the patients will not have any pain. It's fairly, very easy. Very easy. Very easy. But then in terms of screening though, um, you recommend that we can first do the non-invasive tests. Initially, you can do uh, like a screening tests. Mm -hmm. Uh, like the stool test, no, the, the FOBT in the pit, and uh, it really depends. No, if it comes out positive, no, mm -hmm. and your gastroenterologist would actually recommend to do a colonoscopy. Okay. So anyway, those three uh, screening options are readily available in the medical city, and I think um, that will be very wise for our patients, especially those who are only forty-five years old and above male or female doctor, there's no yes. there's no exception. There's no exception. Yeah. Both males and females. As long as you're 45 yeah. and above, uh, your gastroenterologist will tell you it's time to get a yeah. colonoscopy. Parang talagang life begins at 
part 40. 40. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, but then of course, um, what can we do to actually lessen our risk or chances of getting colon cancer? Though? All right. So, first of all, uh, we try to reduce the factors that are modifiable. So those are lifestyle. No? So eat healthy, high fiber diet, uh, low fat, avoid processed meats. You know, control obesity, and yeah. of course, uh, have uh, moderate physical activity. Mm -hmm. So those are the lifestyle uh, changes that one can do to actually prevent colon cancer and actually have a good overall health. Yeah. Again, uh, a preventive strategy is to get the colonoscopy. Because during the colonoscopy, uh, if we are able to identify polyps, mm -hmm. we can remove these polyps that may become cancer in the future. Okay, so actually, so the colonoscopy itself, no, is not just to to check, but of course to prevent from from progressing. So we act on it already. Yes. Yeah. And then for the modifiable factors, actually. Parang, parang basic din naman yung prevention to, okay, yeah. in terms of the body file, you have to high fiber. Parang you can never go wrong with high alcohol, fiber diet, yeah, avoid avoid smoking, alcohol, yes. exercise, healthy lifestyle. So it really pays off when you actually maintain a healthy lifestyle at a young age and then later on you can actually prevent so much diseases including colon cancer. Yes. Okay, so for our last talk, just to wrap up our session today, what is your um, takeaway message for our patients, for our, for our watchers um, in preventing or in this um, campaign to actually make us aware of colon cancer? What's your takeaway message? Okay, so I'd just like to tell our viewers that uh, colon cancer is, is celebrated every March and uh, because of the high prevalence of morbidity and mortality from colon cancer, uh, we would like to remind everyone that colon cancer is beatable, it's preventable, and also it's not a death sentence, it's also very much treatable nowadays. Yeah, so beatable, it's uh, preventable and treatable. So parang when you say, ah, it's colon cancer, parang it's end of the world. No, it's not. It's so not. we can actually, as early as at a young age, diba, we can actually prevent and there's also screening options, there's treatment options. So uh, if you want to learn more about it or if you want if you think that you have the red flags or if you want to get you have to get screened or what or what to do if you have family history, you can always consult our gastroenterologist here in the medical city. So I'm sure that they will be here to give you the best possible management or treatment for you. Okay, so that's all for today's episode. Hope you um, learned a lot from our uh, speaker again, Dr. Jello Angelo Lozada. Thank you so much. Uh, we are very honored and very pleased to have you here. So thank you again, everybody. Thank you, thank you Dr. Claude. Thank you, guys. Okay. Bye. Bye. and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more health videos. And don't forget to hit the notification bell!